to get now is the SLHF 2100 Betamax, which came out in 1991 in America. And this is supposedly the last high-end beta that Sony's ever going to make. That's the remote control on top, which we'll go into in a little while. It requires about an hour of explanation. It's very, very high-tech. Okay, there's a the machine with the lid closed. You flip this cover down, and this whole thing lights up. There the lights off, and now they're on. And we'll do a whole running demo for this of this machine for you right now. First of all, I'm doing this literally on bended knee, so it's not going to be very easy. Plus, I got some lights that are reflecting on the machine, but we'll do the best we can. To begin with, everything that you see here is an orange. For some reason, it comes out red on uh, video. But everything that's lit here is, in fact, an orange. Now, this is known as the buttonless Betamax. There's not one button on this machine. This whole thing is one enormous touchpad. And it's like a, a membrane that some of the early computers had back in the 1980s. But to my knowledge, there's no VHS machine that has this kind of uh, design or feature, at least to my knowledge. Now this here is, I call it a message center. Sony calls it something else. But uh, this is why there's no on-screen programming, because these two lines here actually become... Uh, your on screen so to speak and we'll get into that later on let's go to now to some of the uh, buttons and controls that are on here okay, this is the main function block and yes this is a di digital still frame you have the power on the far left and of course the eject behind it then there's standard operating controls on the top you have rewind forward and uh, I mean rewind play and fast forward below that is still frame below that is stop and to the lower right you have two record buttons and they have to be pressed simultaneously to get into the record mode. Next we have some other controls. At the top we have the record mode which is just the speed. Below that is your timer record on or off. Below that is your quick timer which is like a typical beta uh, in 30 minute segments. On the top again we have the uh, TV or VTR switch. I don't know why it says antenna on there. Then to the right of that is the counter reset. Counter remaining. That's uh, either the hours, minutes, seconds counter and you push it and you get time remaining. And the funny thing is on this particular machine, that even when you're in fast forward or rewind, the remaining works. Unlike the 1000 where you had to be in the play mode mode to have the remaining work. And to the right of that, of course, is tape return, which is your tape return to zero, zero. Top is record speed, TV or VTR, counter reset, counter remaining, and tape return. Below that's the whole index function. You have your index where you can, the first, which just says index, is index search. Then you have, of course, index mark, index erase. Below that are your input select, where it goes through tuner, in, uh, line 1, 2, and 3. This has three line inputs, and where it says S-Video, line 1 and 2 have an S-Video, a YC jack in the back, where you can uh, wire in a direct input from your VHS, VHS machine or your ED beta. Now, why this machine has an S-Jack when it's not an ED machine is beyond me. I think it's a waste of time myself. Next block off to the right, you have your channel up and down. That's the big plus and minus. At the top is Super Beta on or off. Next to that is your B1S Super High Band on or off, which was available only previously on the SLHF 1000, which was released back in 1986. To the right of that, where it says stereo left to right, is obviously to access a left or right channel on the Beta Hi Fi stereo track. The second row is your editing. You have audio insert video insert which really really works well finally on a beta and synchro edit which of course is used in conjunction with some other betamaxes that have synchro edit feature bottom is your typical tuner add or erase and on the bottom right hand corner for the first time on a beta we have auto tracking which is de defeatable and it's a good thing because it's not always exactly perfect right of that are some other controls these three top controls are all activated by this down or up arrow and then cleared by the use of this OK lever. Record level is your left and right meters when you're recording, whether it's off the tuner or off a line input. The middle one says tracking or still adjustment is just that, that you're tracking. And then of course you have sharpness, soft or sharp. And you can increase or decrease any of these three 
by using these up or down arrows. Then when you have the level that you want, you hit the OK button and this returns to the hours, minutes, and seconds counter. And the only place you see all this stuff, where you see your record level, or the tracking, or the sharpness, is on that display, which I'll show you in a second. And here are the last two rows of uh, touchpads. That musical note on the top is for the buzzer, on or off. And what that is, is every time you push one of these little pads, uh, a little beep sounds. And you can defeat it by pushing this note either on or off. Tape select is for your tape remaining, or time remaining where you actually push this thing and it reads L500, L750, or L830 for your tape length. Edit is edit on and edit off, which of course controls the sharpness of the picture when you're editing to or from other machines. An audio monitor is to access the beta hi-fi track, the linear track, or a mixture of both. On the bottom, mode. That of course is uh, VTR1, 2, or 3 which uh, is for all Sony VTRs and you, it's switchable one, two, or three so you can match the remote to the machine. Auto stereo is of course for your tuner if you, if you want the uh, TV channels to come in in either stereo or mono. CATV puts the machine in the CATV or the straight antenna mode and SAP is for your second audio program which of course I usually turn off. And now we're going to zoom in on this part of the machine. For, of course, the power on or off, and the little thing below that it means cassette is in. On the upper right, we have the Beta 1S Super High Band Mode, which is switchable on or off. Below that, Super Beta, switchable on or off. Below that, Beta Hi-Fi, which is always on in the record mode. You cannot defeat it. But this, of course, also shows the tape playback, whether it's in Beta Hi-Fi or regular audio. And the bottom block, which says Auto Tracking, if you have the Auto Tracking on, this is lit. If it's off, then it's off. Of course. What it shows you here, do a little Kerry Decker thing, this is the record speed that I'm set on right now. Now if I were to change that, which is over here, I can make a beta 2 or beta 3 or beta 1. Here is your line input and again I can change that right down here. If I barely touch this thing, I got channel 3, line 1, line 2, or line 3. And like I said, line 1 and 2 each have an S input. Why, I don't know. It's not an ED machine. Let's put a tape in play and see what happens anyway. Put a tape in play. You have an arrow here that shows you the direction. And this is something new. with a little thing called status. And this thing moves all the time every time a tape is in the play mode. So here it's showing you tape playback, the speed, beta 2, hours, minutes, and seconds counter, and this is the direction. Now when you're in fast forward and you want to go on a beta scan, Watch what happens down here where it says, says line 2. That changes to the word Q. The tape counter is moving faster, and this thing's moving faster on the right hand side. Now we we'll go right back into play again. You want to go in reverse beta scan, it says REV for review. The arrow, goes, of course, goes the other way, and so does that status display, which I think is kind of neat. When you go in pause, you get the typical double line that says pause here, and this thing also stops over here. I hope this uh, camera's picking up the little tone also.